Number 52. Referring to figure 11.20, prove that the buoyant force on the cylinder uh, is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced, which is basically Archimedes' principle. All right, um, so I'm going to kind of do it my own little way with my own diagram here. Um, so what we want to, so here we have a cylinder, okay, and we have it uh, submerged in water, okay. Now, if we think about this, there's going to be two particular forces acting on this cylinder, all right, uh, regardless of its weight, right. So the two forces here acting on this particular cylinder are going to be the force that's pushing down on top of the cylinder. Now realize that there is a column of water above this, okay? So there's a certain mass, right? A certain weight of water above it. So this will be pushing down on the top part of the cylinder just like this. We'll call it, this is the force of the top. Then there's also another force pushing upward from the bottom, okay? We'll call this the force from the bottom, so F sub B, okay? Now, we can, if we think that this is less dense, right, than the uh, surrounding water, the water basically wants, since the water then is more dense, it wants to come down and it wants to take back up this particular region in space from the cylinder. So the water is kind of moving back down and pushing upward. Let me clean this up. It's, it's moving back, it's moving down and then kind of pushing upward on the cylinder here. Okay, so... We'll call that the force at the bottom, all right? Now, uh, knowing this, okay, I'm going to now create this little uh, equation. I'm going to say, and this basically, the sum of this is the buoyant force, okay? So we have then the buoyant force. Equally now, the force on the bottom of the object minus the force on the top of the object, okay? So now, let's expand on what do we mean by force on the bottom and force on the top. Well, if you notice, it's a cylinder, it has a certain area, and it's at a certain height. Both of these are at certain heights below the, below the top of the water. So what I realized is I could probably use this formula and rearrange it a little bit, right? Solve this thing for F. That would mean that F is equal to PA, right? Pressure times area. So now I'm going to substitute this on into my equations, okay? So now we have the buoyant, but I'm not going to change the buoyant force because I want to try to show something. So the buoyant force I'm going to leave alone. And now I'm going to, ooh, I got two Bs here. So this is the buoyant. I'll call it, uh, well, yeah, I'll call this uh, BY for buoyant, okay? So the buoyant force here will equal the force on the bottom, which I can then uh, expand to be the pressure on the bottom of the cylinder multiplied by the area of the bottom of the cylinder, multiplied then by the pressure on the top of the cylinder, um, or did I say multiplied? I don't remember. Subtracted by the pressure on the top of the cylinder, multiplied then by the area of the top of the cylinder. So now um, I know in terms of my picture, I just have these H's around, right? So somehow now I got to try to figure out how do I get height on into this equation? And I realize that height is connected to pressure, right? And we've done problems like that where, you know, relative to the top of a certain water layer, the pressure, you know, at the top of this thing should be less than the pressure at the bottom because the heights are different, right? There's, um, yeah, we, we've done problems like that. So now um, what I want to do is I want to substitute this now on in for the pressure, okay? So we have the force, the buoyant force that is, will now equal uh, the height at the bottom, okay? Relative, meaning the height of the bottom of the cylinder relative to the total top, okay? Uh, multiplied then by the density of the water, all right? Density of the fluid, I'll just call it density of the water. Then multiplied by uh, gravity. And then that multiplied by, so that's all three things, and that multiplied by the area, right? At the bottom of the cylinder, that's the A there. So similarly, we'll do the same thing, right? This is the, air, this is the height at the top, multiplied by the density of the water, multiplied by G, multiplied by then the area area at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust the subscripts here quickly. Okay. Instead of, so right here, instead of calling this H sub B and H sub T, I call them H sub two and H sub one. All right. So why don't I just, I'm just going to erase that and just call it H sub two here and erase this one and call it H sub one. Okay. Also, these areas, right, the area at the bottom of the cylinder is the same as the area at the top of the cylinder. So really these A's, I don't really need co uh, subscripts anymore. I'm just going to call them just A, all right? 
Now what I want to do is I want to try to reorganize this a little bit. I want to maybe pull out a common terms. So we have the buoyant force will now be equal to the, I don't want to, yeah, what I'll do is this, uh, density of the water times then gravity times then the area because each of these two terms have those three things in common and then that will then be multiplied by the by the difference in H2 minus H1. Okay. Now, they also gave us a little hint here in the problem, right? It says, note that this thing right here is equal to the volume. Okay, so this right here is equal to the volume. Now, that's the important idea here, that whatever volume, all right, uh, of this cylinder is, essentially, is equal to the volume of the water that's displaced. So in terms of my uh, formula here, when I look at this piece, A times H2 minus H1, okay, this is the volume of the cylinder and also the volume of the water that's displaced. That's what it tells us up here, okay? That should hopefully make sense. So what I realize now is, let me just move this up a little bit. So what I realize now, oh, what happened there? One second. So what I realize is, I realize I ran out of room. That's what I realize right now. So we have then the buoyant force here will be equal to the density of the water times gravity times now the volume of the water displaced. Okay, so I'm going to call this the volume of the water displaced. Okay, so we're getting close here. All right, now what I need to take a look at now what I realize is that here we have density of the water and then this is the volume of the water displaced. Now notice those two are related uh, in this equation up here, right? The simple density equation. So I know that the solving this for mass, I know that the mass of the water displaced will then be equal to the density of the water multiplied by the volume of the water, right? Volume of the water displaced. So if you look at this right here, we have density of water times the vo uh, volume of the water. And that's what I have over here too, right? We can reorganize this if you like. It's all multiplied, right? So who really cares what's next to what? But if you want to make it a little nicer, just pull, just move this on into the inside here. And now we can see it more clearly, okay? So here, these two terms are identical. So what now I'm going to do is substitute in the mass of the water displaced. And notice, lo and behold, this is what we're trying to show, that the buoyant force on the object is equal to the mass of the water displaced multiplied by gravity. And what is mass of water displaced times gravity? Well, that would then be the weight, right? That would then be the weight of the water displaced, okay? So this then, the buoyant force, is going to be equal to the weight of the water displaced. And that's basically what we were trying to show here. Prove that the buoyant force is the weight of the fluid displaced. Okay, so there you go. There it is. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.